Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. I welcome you to Mass on uh, one of the beautiful feast days we have in the churches here, uh, the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And uh, we're offering our Mass for the good estate of Alana McNamara. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my thoughts, through my thoughts, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin prepared a worthy dwelling for your Son, grant, we pray, that as you preserved her from every stain by virtue of the death of your Son, which you foresaw, so through her intercession we too may be cleansed and admitted to your presence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. He went in and said to her, Rejoice, so highly favoured. The Lord is with you. She was deeply disturbed by these words and asked herself what this greeting could mean. But the angel said to her, Mary, do not be afraid. You have won God's favour. Listen. You are to conceive and bear a son, and you must name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will have no end. Mary said to the angel, But how can this come about, since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the angel answered, and the power of the Most High will cover you with its shadow. And so the child will be holy, and will be called Son of God. Know this too, your kinswoman Elizabeth has in her old age herself conceived a son, and she whom people call barren is now in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible to God. I am the handmaid of the Lord, said Mary. Let what you have said be done to me. And the angel left her. The Gospel of the Lord. I was a little tight for time yesterday. Uh, I had mass 
here in the church. I had a two-hour deanery meeting. That's two hours of my life I don't get back. Um, and then I was um, uh, teaching RE in the school. Uh, so I wasn't sure when I was going to find uh, a moment to think about a homily for the Immaculate Conception. Well, fortunately, when I was with class three in the primary school, our topic was the Immaculate Conception. And uh, that helped enormously in uh, getting my thoughts together. So in a way, uh, actually it's class three through St. Mary Magdalene who is preaching this homily today. Uh, so we'll see how they did. Uh, so first of all, we spoke of a concept, that, um, uh, that thought or an idea in their minds, and that the Immaculate Conception is the bringing of, into being that idea in a perfect and spotless way, meaning that Mary as mother is the ideal vessel to carry the Son of God. And so we went on to speak of Mary as the Ark of the New Covenant, and think of the previous Ark, which contained the tablets of the Ten Commandments, the manna, the bread from heaven, and the priestly rod of Aaron. Whereas Mary, as the Ark of the New Covenant, carried inside her Jesus Christ, who is the High Priest, who is the Bread of Life, who is the Lawgiver himself. And Class Ray and I spoke of Mary as the counterpart, the counterpoint to Eve. Ava is turned round to become Ave. De disobedience finds its juxtaposition in obedience. Both Ava and Mary have a motherhood. Eve's motherhood is rooted, quite literally, in the fall, and is rooted in the need to preserve humanity from death. Mary's motherhood is rooted in remedy and restoration, death into life. God preserves Mary from that original disobedience of our first parents. I mean, the inherited sin that we all share is not passed into Mary at her immaculate conception. It's all part of God's uh, plan, help to her, so that she's ready to say yes. I am the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to thy word. Now to help us understand that, we have to go back, year three and I, to this notion of conception, this idea of bringing thought into reality. And we explored the difference, if that's even possible, between how God thinks and how we think. Now we tend to think in linear terms. A moves on to B, moves on to C, or another way we make a choice. We do our action and it's followed by a consequence, although we like to deny that there will be a consequence to our actions. We think God creates humanity, then we are disobedient, then God thinks of a remedy, but if we think like that, we'll be denying God's power and majesty. So we had to change our thinking. We had to change our own concept. God, we suppose, holds everything in a unified thought. He knows the three choices we're going to make before we do. And he knows that we're going to be obedient or disobedient, and so he's already planned the action and the remedy. So he's already planned the remedy for humanity's fall at the same time as 
we choose to fall from grace. Yeah, I know, it's hard to get your head around. But we're not God. Well, sometimes we think we are. St. Paul helps us because he sings that hymn of praise for God's eternal design. Our recognition of Jesus Christ as Lord, our incorporation into his loving presence, the church, which too, the church is not an afterthought. It's been chosen, it's been prepared, even before the world was begun. And uh, Paul's uh, hymn is a eulogy, a eulogy in the truest sense. It's not looking to do what so many bad eulogies do, trying to sing the praises of an individual, but instead it praises God for all the spiritual blessings and for our hope that they will last for eternal life. Eulogies do not, or should not, praise our talents, or how wonderful we were in this life. Instead, they are an affirmation of the greeting that we've already heard twice in this Mass. The Lord be with you. It's a recognition of the shadow of the Most High who has made his presence felt in our life. A life that has been lived in the spirit and of faithfulness to our vocation. Our redemption deals with sin and its consequence, experienced most profoundly in our bodies, which return to dust. And so we all need to be free from this original sin by the sacrifice of the cross, including Our Lady. But listen out for it in the prayer of the offerings. She is redeemed by God's prevenient grace. It means she's redeemed at the very moment of her conception in anticipation to her yes in anticipation to her son's yes. And therefore, of course, Mary is not an afterthought. She is a crucial part of our redemption. Today's Gospel affirms this. At the Annunciation, the angel affirms she is full of grace. And from her conception, she remains sinless and so will not experience bodily corruption. She will be assumed, body and soul, into heaven. It's the logical consequence of grace and holiness. It's a possibility that we now share in by our baptism, that our merited gift of God's grace and election as his sons and daughters. So I don't know what mark out of ten you want to give to year three. I think they did very well. I'd quite like to see what year four can do.
my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Graciously accept the saving sacrifice which we offer you, O Lord, on the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and grant that as we profess her, on account of your prevenient grace to be untouched by any stain of sin, so through her intercession we may be delivered from all our faults through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you preserved the most blessed Virgin Mary from all stain of original sin, so that in her, endowed with the rich fullness of your grace, you might prepare a worthy mother for your son and signify the beginning of the church, his beautiful bride without spot or wrinkle. She, the most pure Virgin, was to bring forth a son, the innocent lamb who would wipe away our offences. You placed her above all others to be for your people an advocate of grace and a model of holiness. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask your almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel, to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation of the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant 
them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, night, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercy. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, for whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. <laughs> Lamb of God. Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Glorious things are spoken of you, O Mary, for from you arose the Son of Justice, Christ our Lord. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, heal in us the wounds of that fault, from which in a singular way you preserve blessed Mary in her immaculate conception, through Christ our Lord.
just before the final blessing, I'd just like to firstly give a parish notice. You may have already heard me say it. Uh, if you are coming or intend to come to Mass, uh, praise God, on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, you must pre-book. You need to pre-book your place for Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. Uh, you need to phone the parish office or you need to email in. Uh, we expect Christmas to be busy and uh, we, we can't have people turning up on the off chance and put the stewards in an incredibly difficult position. So please, you'll find the same in Eastbourne, you'll find the same in St. Leonard's, you'll find the same in Hastings, everyone's pre-booking. So please, if you come to Mass on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, uh, please pre-book. Uh, don't leave it too long to pre-book as well, because obviously bookings have been going for at least a week and a bit now. So do, do so. I encourage you. I don't want to have a conversation with somebody at the door saying, I didn't know I had to pre-book, Father, because I'll just tell you to advise and despise and enjoy yourself. Holy Communion will be distributed after the final blessing. We've only got two stewards this morning, so please be very patient with them. They will bring you forward gently uh, in good time. Uh, and then as you wish, if you wish, you can stay for a short period of adoration until 11. Uh, you can also uh, leave your weekly offertory in the box by St. Anthony as you go out. Remember, we're receiving communion in the hand only. If you have a real devotional issue with that, please remain in your place and see me at the end of the distribution what I can do to assist you. Uh, pay attention to the red lines, don't move into somebody's space unless you know it's clear uh, to do so. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her, for whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you who have devoutly gathered on this day carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.